receive from you. And open our hearts, Lord God, that we would put into action, Lord, what you have laid upon our hearts today. That your name be glorified, Lord God. And Father, even though this is a revelation to me, to this church, Lord God, let this be a revelation to those who hear, Lord God. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you as you listen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Many of us know there are many things happen, happening or that happened in the past couple of weeks. Um, and sad to say that we are living in such time that's a very tr- tumultuous time. I never would have thought I'd see the day where we would see those kinds of flags flying around the United States of America. This nation fought against what these people are fighting about now. You see, if you go to the next slide, the events in the past two weeks had been troubling me, and just this recently, 13 people were killed Thursday, August 17th, in Las Ramblas, Barcelona, when a van plowed into a crowd filled with people around the world. 14 people got killed, dozens wounded in two separate attacks from 34 different countries, including the U.S., Canada, Australia, and of course, Barcelona and Spain and many other countries. They were there. What's interesting is that they were there on vacation. They were there to have fun. They were there to celebrate the couple, the, the husband, there was a, a new couple that went there from America, and they were um, eating their lunch. And after eating their lunch, they were, um, the husband stood up and wanted to go somewhere. And as he did that, the vehicle got him. And they were there celebrating their anniversary. That was so interesting that they are there celebrating their anniversary and their lives were suddenly taken because of the atrocious action of people who think that they can do harm and that when they do harm, it will benefit them, it will benefit their lives. Last week on Saturday, August 12th, not this past Saturday, two weeks ago, the events of Charlottesville, Virginia Mike Sr., the mayor of Charlottesville, called it a cowardly parade of hatred, bigotry, racism, and intolerance. These people who are able to march under the protection of freedom of speech were carrying symbols of hatred in their hands, but were also carrying hatred in their hearts. Later that afternoon, a car plowed into the counter-protesters, injuring many and directly cleaning, killing um, Hire, uh, who, was, um, who was there to counter protest. Her father, Mark Hayer, said this. He had a message on Monday, and his message is stop the hate. Even though he's still in shock over his daughter's death, Mark Hayer said that the people on all sides need to learn to forgive each other. I wonder how many of us can say that. Imagine your child, somebody who's close to you. So it was killed by someone who has sinister plans, who had hatred in their heart, who aimed to do such a thing. And you as a father, as a parent, as a loved one, would say, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. He reminded me of another father, of a godly father, of our heavenly father, and what he did for us. He gave his one and only son. If you go to the next slide, Mark Heyer was quoting Jesus himself. In Luke chapter 23, verse 34, it says, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. I always questioned that with God. I said, Lord, what do you mean by that? How do we not know what we're doing when we're doing things? Isn't it that we decide to do things? Isn't it that we decide to do good or bad? And then as I was reflecting on this, the Lord reminded me, uh, you know, many of us here who, who work, sometimes you come out of work and you're so exhausted, you get in your car, next thing you know, you're home, right? Who's done that? 
Paano ba ako nakauwi? Bigla na lang ako nakarating sa bahay. Right? It's interesting because you kind of tune out. And because you take the route the same day over and o- same time over and over again, same route, uh, there's nothing, um, unless something else happens, then you kind of pay attention. But if nothing happens, you kind of zone out. You don't know what you are doing. It's the same with us. When we sin and we keep doing that same thing over and over again, we become calloused. It becomes routine. We don't know what we're doing. You're being led by your flesh instead of being led by the Spirit. And that's what's happening with this, there I call, there I call them our brothers and sisters, bearing these flags. Yes, they are our brothers and sisters because they were created by God as well. They were God, created in God's image and likeness. Unfortunately, they choose to do things by following the flesh instead of following our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. In First John chapter 3, verse 11 to 12, it says this. This is the message that you have heard from the beginning. We should love one another. We must not be like Cain who belonged to the evil one and killed his brother. And why did he kill him? Because Cain had been doing what was evil and his brother had been doing what was righteous. It's interesting because what is the evil thing that Cain did? And most of us would answer he killed his brother, right? But the Word of God says he had been doing what was evil. This was well before he killed his brother. In Genesis chapter 4, verse 8, it says this, One day Cain suggested, say suggested, to his brother, let's go out into the fields. While they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. This is what we would call premeditated murder. It was already in his heart to hurt his brother, to in fact, to even kill his brother. We don't know the reason. It doesn't state in the Word of God. But we can surmise from the scholars and in the Word of God that perhaps there was hatred in his heart. Remember what we said earlier? Our dear brothers who are carrying these flags, they had hatred in their heart. If you go to the next slide, according to Baker's Evangelical Dictionary of Biblical Theology, hatred or hate derives from a strong dislike or ill will toward persons or things. As an emotional attitude, a person may oppose, detest, or despise contact with a thing or a person. Cain had ill will toward his brother. Because he wanted to hurt him, in fact, he killed him. If you think about it, the death of those in Spain, as well as Heather Heyer's death, was a result of hatred. The ideals espoused by such supremacist groups in this, is the same as what Hitler said. They are not fighting for their own right to be recognized as a people. They are simply acting out in hatred and anger toward anyone and anything who does not agree with them or who does not uh, look like them. So today, the Word of God shows us, if you go to the next, next slide, that hatred matters. I'm like, Pastor, what are you trying to say? You know, people are talking about black lives matter. Yes, they matter. White lives matter. That was what those white supremacists were doing But I'm here to tell you today, the Word of God tells us that hatred matters. Hatred matters because first and foremost, hatred matters to God. Many of us think and many Christians believe that God cannot hate because God is love. But you see, there are two kinds of hate. There's a hate toward people, toward others who are not the same as those who hate toward them. That's the kind of hate that we are so used to. That's not out of love. But God's hatred is holy 
and justifiable. According to the Bible, in the biblical record, every being may express or experience hate. Biblical, biblical wisdom says this in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 8. There is a time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Hate in itself is not necessarily evil. The character of God is love. And hate is the opposite of love. But the Word of God also says that God hates certain things. Amen? In Amos chapter 5, verse 21, God says this, I hate, I despise, and reject your sacred feasts, and I do not take delight in your solemn assemblies. This is when we do these things as idols. We idolize other things. These, these festivals that we do that are not really toward God and honoring God, that's what he hates. He hates, he hates religiosity. That's what this is talking about. When you go into church day in and day out and there's no relationship there, it's all out of duty. It's all just, an, just because somebody told you to go. God hates that. Why? Because he wants to establish a relationship with his children. We're not supposed to come here and just be pew seaters. We're supposed to come here, hear the word of God, and act on it. Amen? Amen. The Lord hates hypocrisy and lies. In Zechariah chapter 8, verse 17, it says this, And let none of you devise or even imagine evil in your heart against another. And do not love lying or half-truths. That's what other people would call a white lie, half -truths. Truths. For all these things I hate, declares the Lord. It's funny because we have to be truthful. Amen? Unfortunately, we have this thing in our culture where when somebody says, oh, let's meet on this time, on this date, and nahihiya tayo. Ayaw natin sabihin, well, I can't really go, so I'm just going to say yes but not show up. Right? Amen po ba? Nako, may tinamaan. And honestly, sometimes I do that. I still do that sometimes. Not, not as often as, as I used to. Because I want to be with that. Just, it happened just last night. I wanted to be with my brothers. But I was so exhausted and I needed to study the word. So, when, so I texted one of them and said, Brother, I'm sorry. I said yes. I know I said yes. I was coming. But unfortunately, I, I, I need to get in the word of God and finish studying and just be with him. And they understood. But there are times when we say, you know, there are times when we, we are like working on something. We agree. It took like two hours to agree on a particular date and time. And we're going to meet. And then I show up and there's two other people there. Right? Brothers and sisters, as Christians, we must shed those types of responses. We must know that when, let our yes be yes and our no's be no's. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because the Lord hates half-truths and lying. The Lord also hates wrongdoing. In Isaiah chapter 61, verse 8, For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery with a burnt offering, and I will faithfully reward them and make an everlasting covenant with them. We must not do wrong to other people. And it's interesting how he puts these two things next. The Lord hates divorce. And violence together. In Malachi chapter 2, verse 16, he says, For I hate divorce, says the Lord, God of Israel, and him who covers his garment with wrong and violence, says the Lord of hosts. Therefore, keep watch on your spirit so that you do not deal treacherously with your wife. I was just reading some blog posts and uh, many people, especially those in the entertainment industry, would, would uh, reveal and confess that many of their problems, their marital problems, arise from doing drugs, drinking, gambling, all these things that they should not be doing. And because of that, oftentimes, there is violence involved. That's why God said,